Well guys, today we are going to talk about all things Pi Hole. Yes, Pi Hole, the ultimate Pi Hole configuration guide. And we're going to step through this piece by piece, step by step. What are some things that we're going to cover? Well, if you're interested in setting up Pi Hole for your home network or your home lab network in general, we're going to cover topics such as configuring Pi Hole with Docker, configuring Pi Hole with proper SSL certificates, and also configuring Pi Hole with synchronization between multiple Pi Hole instances. What is the ultimate way to configure and easily spin up Pi Hole in a home lab? Coming up next, the ultimate Pi Hole configuration guide. If you have heard about Pi Hole before, and no doubt you have as you start to delve further into home lab networking and DNS in general, which DNS is a critical part of any computer network, then no doubt you have heard about Pi Hole or at least read about Pi Hole. Pi Hole is a network level ad blocker that can improve your internet browsing at your home. And it can also protect you from things such as uh, ads, trackers, and other unwanted content that you may not want to expose your home network or home lab network to. Pi Hole works by intercepting the DNS requests or these name resolution requests that come from your home network and it blocks the requests that are served out for known ad serving domains. This means that you can browse the internet using Pi Hole and block any ads before they even reach your devices, making your browsing experience even faster and ensuring that you have additional security on your home lab network. And what's more, Pi Hole is very simple and easy to configure. We're going to walk through today how to do this using Docker, which allows you to spin up a Pi Hole instance in literally just seconds. Guys, I want to show you just how easy it is to spin up a new Pi Hole installation using Docker. So first, we're, we're simply going to just use the Docker command line, and we're going to go through this step by step. So I just pasted in the command, and it looks intimidating. Don't let this command intimidate you. We're going to go through every parameter so you understand thoroughly what's going on. So we are simply just using a Docker run. The dash DIT will allow this to run as a daemon, so non-interactively. And then also we are doing some port 40. So we are translating port 80 to the container port 80. We're also translating the DNS port 53, both UDP as well as TCP. Uh, from the host to the internal Pi Hole container. And that is so it can answer those DNS requests coming from your client. And then we're also doing a volume mount. So we are saying our current directory, we want to create the folder Etsy Pi Hole, and that will be mounted internally in the Pi Hole container as Etsy Pi Hole. We're also doing another volume mount. So the current directory with the Etsy DNS mask.d directory and we are internally mounting that in the pi hole container as etsy dns mask.d we're naming the pi hole pi hole test and then finally we are telling docker to pull the image pi hole slash pi hole and we are using the latest tag let's spin up the pi hole container as you can see, the Docker command did not find the Pi Hole image locally. So as expected, it is simply pulling this down from the Docker registry. And just like that, in just a few seconds, we now have our Pi Hole container has been provisioned. We can issue a Docker PS. And as we can see, the Pi Hole container has been started up and the status is starting. So if we continue to take a look at the status of the container, and keep refreshing, we should see this go to a healthy state in just a few seconds. And there you have it. We've got a healthy Pi Hole container. Now we want to browse out to the web interface of our Pi Hole container. And I'm going to add the slash admin. And as you know, I'm not using HTTPS as this is not 
as of yet secured with an SSL certificate. So I'm just using the IP address of my Docker host, the port 80 port, and then slash admin. As expected, we now have our PyHole container up and running. And we can also combine this with a Docker Compose file to not only spin up PyHole, but also spin up traffic to handle the proper SSL certificates that we want to place on our PyHole instance or instances. Now let's put things together a bit more. Let's see how we can spin up not only PyHole, but also traffic using Docker Compose so that we can properly connect to our PyHole container using that encrypted SSL connection. So I'm gonna show you guys the Docker Compose file that I have configured. And we're going to step through this line by line just so you guys can see what's going on. So at the very top, we are spinning up a traffic container and we're looking at the latest traffic uh, image that's available, setting our restart policy, setting a few of the command line parameters, which equate to setting up the entry points for traffic, which allow it to know which ports basically to listen on. And of course, configuring our ports here, we are configuring our traffic container to connect to our traffic network, which I will show the configuration at the bottom of this file. We're also setting the volume parameter so that the traffic container can listen, properly interact with all of the Docker containers that we have running on this particular Docker host. Now we're getting to the PyHole container. So with a PyHole container, we are pulling the latest image available. We're setting the container name. We are exposing ports 53, both TCP and UDP. We're setting the upstream DNS servers that we want PyHole to be able to use. We're setting our time zone, the web password, the PyHole DNS configuration. If we want to use DNSSEC, we can set that parameter here. Also the virtual host that we want to use, the theme, PyHole domain, so here we are mounting via the volume mount the local file system folder that we want to be provisioned inside the container. Our restart policy, which I want to set to always. And here we are also connecting the PyHole container to the traffic network. And then also for the labels, worked with a web server in the past. The host header configuration allows us to essentially say to traffic, which host do we want traffic to answer to and then present the PyHole container using that host. So as you can see, I've got PyHole test.cloud.local. We are setting TLS to true, the entry point to web secure, and then the backend container is still being accessed from the traffic side over port 80. Now, finally, we get down to the bottom of the file. We are creating the traffic network, a bridge network. We're naming it the default driver, and then we are actually manually setting the subnet. That's optional. You don't have to do that. So that is the file, uh, short and simple. So now that we've configured our Docker Compose file, we can simply issue a Docker Compose up dash D. And as you can see, the Docker Compose process is now pulling all of the container images as needed, including traffic as well as PyHole. And both of the containers have now been configured and provisioned. So we can do a Docker Compose PS. And as we see, PyHole is in the starting state. And once again, if we uh, continue to look at the state, we should see that health status go to started. Now we have the up and healthy state on our container. Now what I want to do is browse out to this DNS name, which I do have configured on a DNS server that is my lookup server in my home lab environment for testing purposes. So I've already configured pyholetest.cloud.local and we should be able to re resolve this correctly, and we do. And we are expecting to get the SSL warning. At this point, we are not provisioning true SSL trusted certificates for this connection, but this is a good sign. This tells us that we have established connectivity. We are communicating over port 443. We can do advance, continue on, and now we see our PyHole interface. Next, let's talk about configuring SSL certificates. Having proper SSL certificates on your home lab services ensures that those home lab services are indeed the trusted connections that you expect 
running these certificates that you also expect those services to be running. And again, using the traffic container, we can also, with Docker Compose, spin up Pi-hole along with traffic for proper SSL connectivity. Now let's take a look at our Docker Compose configuration that adds the ability to introduce Let's Encrypt proper certificates for our particular domain. And we're going to use that in conjunction with Cloudflare as the DNS provider to allow us to properly pull those SSL certificates from Let's Encrypt. So there are just a few additional lines of configuration. As you can see under the traffic container, we have comments to set up Let's Encrypt. We have DNS challenge equal to true, and we're going to use our Cloudflare provider to provide the answer to that DNS challenge. The DNS challenge provider, this line, of course, is Cloudflare. And then with the Let's Encrypt email, we need to plug in our proper email address here. We're also using an acme.json file, which is the file that actually stores the Let's Encrypt certificates. Again, we've got our entry points. We go on down to the web secure configuration, and here we are configuring the cert resolver as Let's Encrypt. Two additional lines of configuration that are important are the TLS domains and again, another TLS do domains for the SANS configuration. With this configuration, what I am doing is what is called wildcard certificates from Let's Encrypt. So we enter our proper domain here, then we use the star dot our domain to tell Let's Encrypt that we're wanting to provision a wildcard certificate for all of the services that we request using this Docker Compose configuration. On the environment, we have a couple of environment variables that we need to configure. Here with the Cloudflare email, you're going to enter your Cloudflare email address as your account holder. You also need to spin up a DNS API token with Cloudflare that allows you to communicate with your Cloud Cloudflare environment programmatically and then properly provision Let's Encrypt. So all of the same configuration as before, except take note of the labels. Here we are actually replacing the host with our actual DNS domain that lives on the internet. This needs to be a publicly accessible DNS domain for Let's Encrypt to do the DNS challenge and actually validate the DNS domain is valid for Let's Encrypt to provide those certificates for us. You're going to replace the mydomain.com with your actual DNS domain. Also of note, I am adding a Watchtower container and Watchtower, in case you aren't familiar, Watchtower is a solution that allows you to update containers on a set interval. So it can automatically go out and update your pie hole container. So you don't have to go out and repull the container manually. Watch how it can do that for you. And I'm just simply setting some notification options here with my MailRise server. And again, the networks that we want to configure. After running a quick Docker Compose up dash D, we are now navigated out to our pie hole container. And as you notice, there is no certificate error. So we've got the lock, we've got everything looks good. And now we can actually log into our Pi-hole instance with proper SSL certificates. Awesome. If you're like me, you want to run multiple Pi-hole instances. And the reason for that is you always want to have critical services in your lab environment or home network to be redundant or highly available. Running multiple Pi-hole instances is a great way to do that. And using a project called Gravity Sync from VM Stan, we can essentially synchronize multiple Pi-hole instances and their databases of address lists, the block lists, and other configurations that we want to exchange between those multiple Pi-hole instances and have all of those synchronized so that if one Pi-hole instance goes down, you can at least configure a primary and a secondary DNS server in your home network and your clients will fail over to your secondary. Configuring Gravity Sync is extremely straightforward. It's a simple configuration script and installation script all in one. 
and I'm just pasting the the installation script in so you guys can take a look and see what it looks like and it just literally pulls the install.sh script from the official github repository now I'm not going to go ahead and rerun the installation of it as I've already ran the installation on this particular pihole instance However, I want to show you guys if, if you execute the gravity-sync executable, you'll get an idea for how simple the utility makes synchronizing multiple pie holes. So I have a remote target that is configured. It's uh, .15 as opposed to this particular pie hole is .5. And as you can see, once you have the source and the target configured, then Gravity Sync will go through and it will evaluate the differences between the source and the target. Validates uh, various configuration information, your DNS settings, Gravity database, as well as block lists, DNS records, all of those types of things are evaluated with Gravity Sync so that you don't have to manually sneaker net the changes that you make on your source pie hole over to the target pie hole. It's all done programmatically using the gravity sync utility. So what do you guys think about pie hole DNS and this ultimate pie hole configuration guide? Hopefully you found something in this video to be helpful in your home lab network. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel. It will keep on home labbing. And as always, I'll see you guys soon.